everyone. Um, I guess uh, this is going to be a pretty busy meeting this morning, and uh, we're all over the place. Um, Kuros is in Wilmington, I'm at South Park, Tiffany's in Valentine, and we're running around. So anyway, good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Um, first of all i want to um, basically congratulate all of you guys you know we've been traveling to different offices and um, sharing the successes of all of you guys with uh, all your co-workers and uh, so i want to i think we got a couple of more offices left but uh, it's been amazing meeting everyone everybody i haven't been able to go to everyone but the ones that I've been to, again, congratulations. I think Tiffany got to uh, talk about that slide um, on all the award winners. Um, the other thing I was going to uh, mention, and I'm going to look at my notes here, um, is uh, I think I've shared that before to, with some of you that uh, the numbers have come up, and Remax Executive is um, number one, again, in Southeast. Uh, United States as far as the, all the remaxes, there are six states involved, and uh, I think um, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, uh, uh, Georgia, and one other state, I can't remember, uh, but anyway, the Southeast region um, is uh, comprised of, um, I don't know how many offices, but quite a few offices, but again, congratulations, you guys, we made number one as far as both, I believe, volume and units sold. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna let Tiffany take over. Um, and I don't know whether Tiffany's gonna be first or Kurosh. I actually am going to let Karush step up and introduce our next guest. We have a special guest today from Guests in Brady. His name is Kevin and Karush, if you wanna do the honors. Are we live? Good morning, everyone. So we're making all sorts of advancements in technology. I'm in Wilmington today with our Wilmington crew here. Beautiful weather. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited to be here. But uh, yeah, love to introduce uh, Kevin Brady. Kevin and his partner, Russell Guest, uh, uh, they've been operating in, in, the, in the headquarters in Greenville, South Carolina for 18 years. We are super excited to partner with them. They have offices in Anderson, Spartanburg, Greenville, and now they're expanding into the Charlotte market. Uh, super, super exciting for us to work with this professional uh, organization. They have several attorneys, some of the best paralegals in the business. Uh, Kevin, welcome to our meeting. Uh, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. Hey, thank you, Chris. Howdy. It's exciting to be here and be in front of everybody. Um, just a quick recap of who Guest and Brady is for everybody. So we, me and my partner, Russell, started this uh, firm in January of 2005 and I had a construction law litigation background before then and we've been I've been doing nothing but real estate since then uh, we've we've grown to now five offices predominantly in the upstate we have uh, four offices in the upstate and one new office that we've just opened up this past month in Indian land and we're excited about the Indian land market we've got a attorney uh, in in that location, uh, Madison Turner. She's been doing real estate transactions for about six years now, and uh, both in North and South Carolina. So she's licensed in both. We have also hired a paralegal there, um, Mary Metzner, who is a 20-year paralegal veteran doing real estate transactions in both North and South Carolina. So uh, we're excited to come into the uh, Fort Mill, Rock Hill market, along with the greater Charlotte area to be able to do those transactions. It's a, it's really opening up a whole new world for us. We're excited about our partnership with Remax Executive. Um, we've had tremendous meetings and have started. Uh, we, we've got a lot of work down here in the upstate from our partners down here. And uh, it, it's been a blessing to us all. So we're we're excited to continue and, and keep that uh, the opportunities ahead of us and working with all of the REMAX executive agents. And you know, part of what makes uh, Guest and Brady unique in our marketplace is uh, when me and Russell started this firm many years ago, it was like most, it was just to run a business, make and earn a living for our families. 
but over time those those priorities change and what we've come to do is build a culture of just loving on people and one of the things you'll feel when you walk into a guest and brady office is that that feeling of uh, us loving on not only our employees their families it's the agents it's the people that walk in the door we don't we don't call them transactions in our office we call them transitions uh, because we want to make sure that we're seeing every person that walks in the door for who they are and where they are in their life right because as you know as realtors you're meeting these people and you know it's one of the biggest trans <clears throat> transitions of their life they're they're buying a new home because they're newlyweds or they're upsizing a home because they uh, just had a baby or and or they're downsizing because their children they're now empty nesters or they're selling their parents home after they've had to put them in nursing homes so it's the good the bad the ugly it's it's all in between of that and so we want to make sure that we meet those people where they are at when they walk in the door and and just and just love on them so you'll feel that when you come to one of guest and brady's locations um we we take that very seriously and we built a, our culture around that so um we are excited to also be able to add value back to you know our our partners remax executive we we do what we call these facts and snacks in our office where we bring in our partners such as remax uh, and do uh, educational series for free we're working on creating uh getting continuing ed credits for those as well um just to add value to help you know educate on topics that we see all the time that come in and we're gonna we're gonna be doing one of those oh we're she's put up on the screen these are the ones that we currently have in our offices that are specifically for remax executive um, we've got the one next monday that we're going to have all of the uh, realtors in the upstate that are going to join us but and talking about just how we can make everybody look good for their for their clients right because that's what everybody wants they want people to be excited to uh to come back and refer other clients to you as realtors and so it's how, how do we make that happen um on tuesday april 4th this is going to be opened up for all of remax executive we're going to do a hybrid meeting in the greenville remax executive office and we're going to do that on a on a Zoom call, and we're going to be talking about the new uh, forms that just came out for South Carolina by uh, the Realtors Association, the addendums, and we're going to just go through those, talk about what those significant changes are, the two new forms that have come out there, and just walk through those. Uh, we're also going to talk about just top issues that we see on a on a week to week basis that affect your clients, the realtors, and just issues that pop up over and over again, how we deal with them and what you should be looking for. So it's, uh, and then that's just, again, to be able to add value back to you. The other, the other thing that we do that adds value back to our realtors is we make ourselves available. So if you, we, we have direct extensions for all uh, nine of our real estate attorneys we have my cell phone out there for realtors they can text me call me anytime i i answer those calls and i, I respond to those texts um because you get out in the field and you're dealing with a, a client who just won't sign that contract because they just want to hear you know from a legal from an attorney's perspective what that means for them you know it, it, that's on a saturday at 3 30 in the afternoon yeah, that, kept, that that house might be under contract by somebody else by Monday morning before they talk to somebody. And we understand that. So we were responsive to those needs. Um, we look for all kinds of ways to just add value back to our partners. And so we're excited about this partnership and being able to um, serve the greater Charlotte area and Indian land and Fort Mill and in uh, and the upstate. And so I. Uh, let you or ask you to take the opportunity to come out to our Indian land location. We are right next door to uh, your 
uh, Remax executive office in Indian land. So we're actually the suite on the corner there. And so you, you, you pull up there and you're going to see familiar signs and, uh, and your clients will feel at home. So uh, we look forward to serving y'all and helping y'all any way we can. If y'all have suggestions for anything that we can do to help you serve you better, please reach out to us. Thank you, Kevin. One of the things that I love that you said was that you would take our call at 3.30 on a Saturday afternoon. And I can't tell you how many calls I get on Saturday afternoons and Sunday mornings and having an attorney that's approachable, who's going to give advice and counsel is huge. And that's one of the reasons we partnered with you is because of your support. And as you said, you like to love on people. It makes a difference when you have an attorney that's partnered with you to do that. And so we're excited about all of the opportunities and the educational opportunities that you're doing for us. The South Carolina forms update that you're doing in Greenville, we're actually going to give credit for our risk management session for one of those for all of our agents. And that's why we're doing it hybrid, because hearing from you about the changes in our the addendums, the disclosure, as well as the trials and tribulations of things to watch out for in South Carolina contracts is huge. With you coming into our Indian land office, we have a number of agents that border North Carolina. And so they're going back and forth between the North Carolina contract and the South Carolina contract. So that's gonna be huge for them to hear your perspective. So thank you so much for agreeing to do that and continue to share information. Thank you again. Thank y'all, we're looking forward to it. Kevin. Kevin. And Karush is up next. Great. Hopefully you guys don't hear an echo here. Let me share my screen. Okay, let's see. So Tiffany, can you see my screen? I just want to make sure I can see it from this end. I want to I make can, sure that yes. you guys can all see it. All good? You're it's all, all good. Yeah, we can see your screen, Kurosh. Go ahead. I know. <laughs> Hadi, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, I can see. Okay, it's good. So we had difficulty hearing Tiffany. Well, again, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to thank all the North Carolina brokers uh, to be patient to hear about the South Carolina Attorney Partnership. I'm really excited about it. What I'm trying to do is to either help our partners to grow to other markets and come into North Carolina or find similar partnerships. So again, thank you so much and apologize that if it didn't apply to some of your markets. Uh, but I'm excited to talk to you about the market trends, what's happening in the real estate. I'm excited to be in Wilmington today. Uh, we have a lot of people on the call, but it's not a true representation because we have a lot of watch parties going on. Just in this room, we have about 30 people sitting. Uh, so I think uh, we have at least about 200 brokers connected today, this morning, and talk about the business. Okay, so it's officially March Madness, right? How many basketball fans here? Okay, good. So you know the, you know the rules of the game. Uh, there's, there's really some, some craziness going on outside of at basketball, but I'm going to start with the good news. Um, the sales were up in February 14.5%. This is the biggest jump we had since July of 2022. So with all this negative news, the sales are up for real estate. This is an upward trend. Why we're seeing this, you know, in, in January the numbers were up slightly, not as much as February. These are based on closed sales. This is a true indication that the market changes. The interest rate uh, went down in January, and a lot of people, a lot of buyers came to the market. So now we're seeing the true results of that and how the market quickly responds to the rates. So good news for real estate. I promise I'm going to start with good news. Uh, here's the forecast for NAR. Because of the, the numbers of positive numbers that was released in, in January and February, they decided to change their forecast for the year. So uh, when they did the forecast early January of this year, the uh, estimation for the total number of transactions of, of home sales in the United States was 4 million. And that is, by the way, guys, is the lowest we've had in the past two decades. Like when, when the market crashed in 2008, um, we had well over 4.3 million transactions in 2009, a year before the, after the crash. So this is the lowest that we've ever had. But that was their, their, their forecast. And they came, came back and just changed that forecast uh, 
this week, I think this was released on Monday, that based on the new numbers, now they think optimism that is, is, is higher. Now they're thinking that we're going to be closer to 4.5. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac both changed their forecast, and now they're closer to 5 million homes sold. So those are all positive news for real estate nationwide. Uh, here's a chart just to show you how many homes were sold historically. I mean, yes, we had some, some good times in 2021. Everybody knows that that was a peak in our industry, and we're probably never going to see that year again. Um, 6.5 million. This, these are existing home sales that doesn't have any new construction numbers in there, so it was well over 7, 7 million. But it shows you, we kind of dipped down. Why I have the slide on, on the screen for you guys? Because I believe we've seen the bottom. I think we've seen the bottom. And th there's only one direction to go from this point. It's going to be slow, but it's going to go up. Sales price of the existing homes. There are some reports showing that the home value, NAR has some sort of reports out, Fannie Mae, they're talking about the home value uh, being slightly less than what it was last year. What I want to show you is that what's causing that is actually the markets in the western side of the country. So our southern markets, Wilmington, Charlotte, Greenville, we're not seeing any price drop. You know, we're seeing the property valuation appreciation is still there, but it's not as much as it was two years ago, a year ago. We're not seeing two digit. We're seeing three to 5% in most markets. So still, the, the southern markets are doing better than the rest of the country. Let's take a look at the inventory. Yeah, we're all seeing the inventory is going up. Days on the market is increasing, right? In some markets, it's doubled. You know, it's gone from 20 days to 40 days. But look at the inventory level. We're nowhere close to what we, what we had in 2018 and 2019. This is still a very, very tight market. At less than 600,000 homes for sale in the market. Yes, it's more than 2022. But reality is, look at what was happening before COVID, that we thought it was a normal market. We had well over a million homes for sale at any given time for years. So we're still operating at 50% of the inventory with all the changes in the market. Here's a map to show you where we have the shortage. As you can see, there's not one state in the country that the inventory is going up, right? This, this, is, this is good news, right? The, the, the home values are not going to drop because inventory is down in every single market in the country. I thought this was funny. Let me move this. Uh, th this, this happens all the time. And trust me, I have friends that they're in the same belief that, hey, yeah, market is crashing, so it's probably time for me to get and look at some houses and see what I can get. The, people are looking for a bargain. And there's so many articles on the internet. People get some wrong ideas. They think that now the banks are falling, the economy is going down. Yeah, let's go after some foreclosures. We need to share those stats. We need to educate our customers. Um, no, we don't. This is a totally different market. I think. Let's see. Next slide. This is another piece that I think we should educate our buyer clients, educate everybody that is thinking about buying real estate. Realistically, th this is what's happening in our market. Um, I don't know where Moody's headquarters is these days. Definitely, they're, they're not anywhere in, in the 50 states, apparently, because they don't know what's going on in the market. But all the other corporations, you see that Realtor.com, Bank of America, Fannie Mae, Morgan Stanley, and Dr. Yoon with NAR, I had an interview last week, they all believe that we are short anywhere between 4 to 5 million homes in this country. I mean, think about 4 to 5 million homes. How many new construction homes we, we add to the market every year? Less than a million. Like right now, the projection is that by end of this year, we're going to have about 850,000 single-family homes. So if we build on the same speed, so the builders don't, don't basically uh, lift their foot off the gas and just continue with the same uh, you know, force that they're doing it right now, it's going to take about five years to have enough inventory. Now, that's, that's if we don't demolish any homes, that we don't lose any inventory in the market, right? to get to an equilibrium that we say, OK, now we can look at it and say, it could be a buyer's market. We are four to five years away from that. Right? In fact, in our January meeting, I had some stats, and I told everybody on the call that I truly believe that 2023 is a short window for a lot of buyers that they want to buy what they like and not compete with other offers, like multiple offers. Uh, because I think, again, once, once 
the market, the, the interest rate is, is back to uh, some palatable level, not going to be 3%, you're going to have a lot of buyers that are waiting. Look at all these homes that are short. The buyers that are waiting to jump in that game, there is going to be competition again. I do believe that 2024 is going to be a tough market for every buyer, not just first-time buyers. Here's some stats on the new construction. Um, I wanted to show you the stats because we hear a lot on, on, the, on the news that we're, we're seeing more permits that are pulling up, you know, there's more construction going up. But if you think about the construction, most of it is happening on the multifamily, right? That's why rents are coming down. We're adding more inventory of multifamily units across the country. So there's, there's more apartment buildings. It's putting some pressure on the rent, and you can see that the rent has, has gone down since December. And there's more of it I mean, coming into the market. Uh, 1.4 million uh, new starts, but if you see about 0 0.8 is, is a single family, and the rest of it is all uh, multifamily, five plus units. So that's, that's we see the biggest jump, 14% um, year over year uh, increase in the number of multifamily permits. Yeah, fun part, right? We're all, that's all we're hearing these days. But the most important thing is, how is that going to impact our business? You know, I'm not a bank expert by any means. I just want to talk about how this may impact our business. It's going to be positive, negative, how to navigate. Um, you know, this is, in a nutshell, I think this is what's happening in the banking industry. I don't know if you guys can all see the screen. But um, you know, it's a situation that it's impossible for the, for the federal government uh, not to get involved. They have to. Right, um, and, and unfortunately, some of the big banks are, are also involved in this, which is going to put more risk on them, but they have to. This is a situation that is not unique to this country. As you guys heard, Credit Suisse and, and uh, UBS, they're merging. That was a shotgun marriage, as, as you want to call it, and they had no ch choice. Um, I thought this was a funny thing. I found this on the internet that um, tells you about when the 1933, when the bank run happened, right? Then FDIC was born, and they decided to come in and shore the deposits and see how the level of deposits have increased over the years. And, and now it's unlimited because that's what the government is telling us. Like, don't worry about your deposits, right? Uh, you know, some people say we nationalized the banking industry overnight. You know, I don't want to go there. But they, I think that the positive thing that comes, come, can come out of this is we're not going to have aggressive hikes. You know, just, just to... Uh, sh explain it in a very, very short and simple way. Um, because of the number of interest hikes that we had in a year, 4.5%, you know, 450 basis point in one year, that, that is part of this issue, that the bonds that these banks that are, they're, they're holding doesn't have the value. So, um, but I want to say, th this is, again, this is not unique to, to the banks in this country. Uh, Credit Suisse, I had some personal experience um, a lot of these banks are they very pro-business, high risk, right? If they're not looking at their portfolio, if, if they have flighty deposits and the people that they hold large sums of accounts and their money, like when you think about um, the, um, the Silicon Valley Bank, uh, majority of their clients had more than $200,000 in their bank account. So these are venture capital groups. And so when they pull this account, these are not like individuals like you and I we're being worried about our money. This is corporations they Take my 50 million out. And, and so that, that's what's causing it. It depends on their appetite. Some of, some of these banks, um, not to get, again, too, too involved in that, they made bad decisions, poor decisions on their risk portfolio. Um, I had personal experience with Credit Suisse. I, I opened an account with Credit Suisse in, in early 2000. Walked into the branch in less than 15 minutes out of bank account. Okay? They didn't ask for any kind of ID, no process, no clearance, no FBI check. Um, you know, I was in logistics business. Most of my customers had accounts with Credit Suisse, and I thought, oh, you know, you know had, had a good name. I need, I need a Suisse account. Uh, so I walked into the branch, and it, it's an interesting, totally interesting business. You know, you, you walk into the vault. They actually give you a tour of the bank and the vault and the facility. They hold artwork, you know, paintings, sculptures, you know, things that you don't normally see in a bank here. Uh, but that is part of their portfolio. That's part of their asset. They were known as a bank that they were all about secrecy, right? Accounts that people cannot find, accounts that people can't, can't trace. 
that, that was the base of this bank for years. And they were very aggressive on loaning money to businesses and not only just in Swiss. I mean, th these guys are, are well spread out in, in US and United Arab Emirates. You know, they're in Europe. They, they funded, invested a lot of businesses over the years, but very aggressive strategy. And so when you fund this money to, to venture capital group companies that they're, they could be affected by economy, they're the first one to pull out their money, Just put the cash somewhere safe because, hey, this business is going to go down, economy is changing. And that's where the bank portfolio has to always be, be safe. You know, if you got to look at the, your deposits and, hey, what's going to happen if 20% of my clients want their deposits? That's what's happening. But UBS is saving it. It's a great bank. It's, I think it was a very good decision. This is not a bailout. It was a business decision. So what we know, again, uh, this is an article from Zillow. They also think that this issue, the banking issue, and what happened in Silicon Valley is going to be better for real estate. We had a lot of startups, all these tech companies getting $100 million, disrupting real estate, coming in with new models. That's going to put that to bed for a while. Right? So we, we have less disruption in our industry because Silicon Valley Bank was, was one of the main companies to fund all these tech companies. Most of them were tech companies. And, and if you think about real estate, I'll say 90% of them, they were banking with Silicon Valley. That's where they get their, their startup money. So first of all, it's going to help us to, to kind of control that interest rate environment, right? We're not going to see 75 basis point. The, the government, the Fed, has to watch this very carefully, that this is going to destabilize the financial system. So um, I have my thoughts on that. Uh, the Fed is going to announce this afternoon at 2 o'clock what the decision is. Um, and I'm not a betting man, but I'm pretty sure they're going to come up with, with another increase. I don't think they're going to back off. If they don't increase uh, the rates, I think they can send a signal to the market that there's something wrong with the economy. There's something wrong that we don't know, right? That's, there's more risk on that. So they're probably going to have 25 basis points. That's my guess. It won't be 50 or 75, but they have to continue to trend. And here's why. There's, there's, there's some solid facts behind it. You know, the labor market um, is very tight. We're feeling it as employers. It's hard when you put a job posting out there to find good quality people. There are 1.9 jobs for every unemployed person, pretty much two jobs for every one person that is looking for a job. And the unemployment rate is 3.4%. That is the lowest we've had since 1969. Uh, so again, these are, these are numbers showing that Whatever the Fed has done so far is not working. They're going to continue this. Um, and unemployment claims are at all-time low. So looking at these stats, that's why I'm pretty comfortable to say they're going to go with a hike. There's going to be more probably throughout the year. But it won't be as aggressive as the last time, you know, 75 or 50. And of course, part of this was due to the, the jobs that were announced in January, 500, 517,000. I think this January, you guys agree that it was unseasonably warm. It was just a weird January, and that's why the job numbers were different. In February, we add another 300,000. If you see, again, there's no sign that they're slowing down this job market. We keep adding more jobs in there. Here's the good news. This is what I was telling you, how it's going to impact us. Since all this banking stuff is out, Here's the new forecast. Fannie Mae, MBA, NAR, they all believe that by end of this year, the mortgage rates are going to drop about 1%. So yes, we're going to have more hikes, but that's still everything that is happening is going to put pressure on the mortgage market. And that's good news, guys. You know, we went from almost 7%, 7%, 7 and a quarter percent, and the rates dropped in January, and you guys saw what happened. We had one of the best February. We had a jump in number of sales. It's going to continue. As these interest rates come down, you're going to have more buyers in the market. This is good news for, news for real estate. And some of them, they, they believe that by, so I, I have another slide. I'm not sure if I have it on this presentation, but there's another slide from Fannie Mae that they expect the rates to be in um, high fours in 2024. So the rates, they think that rates, rates are going to come down further in 2024. Okay, let's talk about rankings. How many of you have seen this ranking from uh, T360? It was on Facebook, Instagram last week. You didn't see that? Okay, well, let's, let's talk about it. 
So T360 is one of the organizations, independent organizations, that they do ranking for real estate companies. They ask every franchise, every office to send their numbers. They verify that with the MLS and the franchise org, and then they come up with the ranking. So they've, they're one of the trusted names, um, I guess, in, in, in the industry for, for ranking and research. And so they publish their data for 2022 sales. Anywhere is the Real G group. This is the group that has brands like Cobalt Banker, Century 21. Um, you know, they, they're combining Sotheby's. They're combining all their numbers. They are number one uh, a brokerage firm. I mean, I shouldn't say brokerage, real estate company in the United States with 636 billion. But if you think about the, what makes this brand, it's not just one, one company, it's they have a family of 11 different brands that they pull all the numbers together. Keller Williams, number two, um, they closed 439 billion. What's interesting that I put on this slide here for you guys is the agent productivity. They closed about 1,000 transactions but 170,000 agents in the United States. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Remax closed almost 800,000 transactions with 58,000 agents. Right? <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. This is the difference, the quality of the brokers within this brand. Uh, and at, next, we have Home Services of America. And I put Compass in there uh, on, on the list because there was a lot of advertising about number one brokerage in the, in the United States. Well, that's, they're in a different category, so they're still not as, as, as big. I mean, they have 28,000 agents. Their production uh, puts them in number five when you think about the size as a whole. So thought that would be stats that you guys would be interested. This is the latest and the greatest about Remax Network. Um, we are a network of 140,000 agents. This is as of February. Remax in United States, this is United States. I'm not including Canada or global numbers here. This is just in, in our country, right? 3,500 offices, 61,000. So since December of 2022, we gained some agents. Our agent count went up by 3,000. We have 61,000 agents. Um, average transaction per agent, 16. That's still two to one compared to average in the industry. Average close volume, 5.5 million. Average commission income, 154,000. Average experience, 15.3. I mean, this, this, this is what you want to see from your brand. Um, and average years with Remax, 9.2. Remax agents don't change companies every year. I mean, there's a lot of turnover in some of the brands. I don't want to name them again, but the ones that I had on the screen. Um, and here's something to celebrate as far as number of agents. If you're a pinnacle agent or pinnacle team, you're in the 0.3% of all the agents at Remax. Congratulations uh, to Jennifer Bullock and her team. And uh, you know, we have several other teams that they're, they're uh, pinnacle teams. I mean, again, it, these are amazing stats. If you're a diamond agent, you're, you're in the top 1% of all the brokers at Remax system. And as you can see, we've got a lot of brokers that they are in that uh, category of, 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 of top, top agents in, in the company. So I'm not gonna go through a whole, the whole list, it's gonna take, take a while, but Here's the stats, just, just again showing you Remax 16 transaction, and you can see all the other brands are about half of that production per agent. But you still have the number one name. This is interesting stats, this is about the team. So teams are, are growing in every market. Remax teams, they are more productive than every other brand in the business. 26.6 transaction per agent. That's a lot. I guess they're working really hard. <laughs> okay, a lot of talk in the market. As, as the market changes, every time we have cycles in the business, a lot of talk about discount brokers, right? Discount brokerages. Uh, trust me, I, I get every day, I, I get at least one or two text messages from our brokers that they're running into somebody that is cutting commission, right? Oh, this person wants to list a house in my neighborhood for 1%. I'm like, like, this is, this is part of the business, right? They come and go. Um, on the brokerage side, I want to show you something interesting. Just doing a quick research on this. These are some of the discount companies, right, from 2018 um, that they came, and some of them, they're no longer here. Doors, Inc., they opened up in 2015, no longer active in 2022. 
Okay? Farah and Homie, no longer in the business. Hauser, they raised $118 million in 2022 from Silicon Valley um, and acquired, <laughs> they were acquired. Uh, Purple Brick, there was a lot of talk about that. I don't know, have you guys heard about Purple, Purple Brick? They came from England, you know, they were a flat fee company. Uh, there was a lot of hype when they started in New York. Agents in North Carolina were all freaking out. Oh, they're coming to my market. They're gone. They left the market in 2019. Um, Redify Real Estate, same thing. And look at Redfin. You know, that's, that's probably uh, one of the biggest names on the discount in our, our market. Uh, they posted $260 million of loss, and now they're rethinking their entire strategy. What I'm trying to tell you is that when the market changes, there's going to be some ideas. But, but guys, long run, Switching to a discount firm, a flat fee uh, business, is not the best decision because they won't be around. Um, I can name a company uh, back in our backyard in, in Charlotte, uh, Wilkinson and Associate. It was a name that um, it, it was known in, in the Charlotte market as, as the first company that came out with this flat fee 100%. And they managed to grow their business to about 900 agents at a time. Right? What happened with that firm? they could not survive with that model. So they ended up buying an ERA franchise. They sold that business. And all the agents under that brand, overnight, they woke up to a franchise fee. Right? It's like, hey, what happened? Um, and so the owner sold the business, and they took over, and they lost half of their agents because of that. Another example I can give you, I mean, I don't, I don't like to talk bad about any brand, but Nest Real Estate. Right? They started totally different franchise model, um, and, and now, they have fees, they got franchise fees. They were forced to charge. If a brokerage is only charging you $200 a transaction, $300 a transaction, there's no way they can give you the service you deserve. And they can't stay in the business. I mean, well, all the expenses that you have to run a business, you, as a business person, you have to always like, think about it, that how is that gonna make sense? If I'm going to a brokerage that is gonna save me $30,000 a year, what am I gonna get? That's a question you have to ask as a business person. So I'm putting this on the screen because I think there's a lot of them probably calling you guys. Just understand the history is going to repeat itself. There's going to be some models, some discount agents are going to come into the business. They'll be out of business. Just be patient with it. <laughs> okay, quickly go through the local markets. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Tiffany because she helped me with some of these stats. Uh, you know, this is, it takes a lot of time to put these numbers together. I'm going to start with the uh, Spartanburg market. Most of our markets, uh, you know, we're still seeing uh, the numbers of closings are down compared to last year, but things are changing. So the Spartanburg market, days on the market are higher, 100%. Median price point is down by 6%. Uh, closings are down by 32%. Greenville market, that's a, that's a market that um, we, we think that there's a lot of room to grow as far as median price point. It's up 3%. Days on the markets are, are up 74%. Closings are down 21%, mainly because of inventory. Anderson, another upstate market, pretty much no inventory in that market. I mean, the days on the market are, are higher, but if you look at the number of homes available to sell, it's 50% less. And the median price point is the same. Uh, Myrtle Beach, this market is on fire. Look, look at the median price point. We're just talking about in some of the country, some of the parts of the country in the West, they're losing property valuation, look at what's happening in Myrtle Beach, 25% 20, uh, increase in median price point. Litchfield, Polly's Island, same thing, 20, 22% increase in, in average price point. Days on the markets are down, actually. Uh, total, total number of closings, 32% uh, down. I, I'm showing you these numbers to show that Carolina markets are strong as far as price appreciation. And we're continuing to between 6 and 25% increase. Go back to Wilmington, since we're in Wilmington. Average prices are up 6%. $410,000 median price point. Wow. Wow. That's great for Wilmington City. Amazing. Uh, closings are down. Inventory issue. I've checked your market. You know, I was actually looking at, at Cape Fear yesterday and looking at the total number of, of homes. And, and it's not just one sector. It's not the homes in a million, million dollar price point. It's every price point. 200,000, 400,000, guys are, are down in inventory. A uh, lot of people moving here. Good problems they have, I guess. Charlotte prices are up to 4%. Uh, days on the market is, is, is higher. And the transactions are down 
34%. So Charlotte's had the biggest hit as far as number of closings. A lot of our Charlotte brokers are, are worried looking at their business this year. It's like, yeah, I'm not doing enough. Well, you're not the only one. This is what's happening across the board in the market. Again, I think it's going to get better. When interest rates come down, not only buyers are going to be out there, there will be sellers that will be motivated to sell. Today, a lot of sellers are worried that, why am I going to sell my house and go from a 3% mortgage to 7%, right? There's only so much you can do with the down payment and buying down the rate. But I think if you come down another percentage, there's going to be a lot of buy, uh, sellers that will be motivated to uh, capitalize this hot, this hot market, get the top dollar for their property, and buy something else. Haywood County, days on the market, 60 days. Again, average price point is higher, 5%. Closings are down. Asheville, North Carolina, another hot market. Uh, median price point, $415,000, 11% up. Lake Norman, 8.5% up in property valuation. Closings are down again, 30%. Very similar to Charlotte market, and days on the markets are up 82. Fort Mill, another South Carolina strong market. I mean, I can't believe the average price point in, in Fort Mill. It used to be around $300,000, now 440000 median price point. Great schools. And here's Gastonia. Median price point, 273000 Closings are down in Gaston County, and days on the market is up. So here's what I'm going to leave you with. This is my final comments. I went through a lot of these um, stats quickly. In the next few weeks, you guys are going to hear more about this banking crisis. There's going to be more talks and, and more talks. And understand, the news media is in the business to get our attention, right? Um, the, no bank in any part of the world is safe to a bank run. Because when you put your money in the bank, they're not going to keep all that cash in their vault. They're going to invest it, right? So if we continue with this bank run strategy, there's no bank is safe. But we can't worry about that. Right now at this point, these banks are too big to fail. The government is, is helping them. There's some talk about FDIC. What if FDIC runs out of money? FDIC is backed by the US government. FDIC has enough money. They're, they're actually forecasting to put out about $60 million billion to save banks. They're ready for this. They know that it's happening. And, and some of these bank failures that we, see, we hear on the news, it has been happening. Last year, we had 16 banks that were seized by F FDIC. Did you guys hear about that? No, right? 16 of them. And, and, and this year, they expect to have another dozen banks but before, between now and the end of the year to fold over. That's part of the business. That's what they do. Um, and FDIC, again, has enough money. They have the backing by the, by the government to come in and do whatever is needed. This is a global issue. Let's focus on what you can control and not something that is out of your control. We need to look at the numbers I showed you, educate our customers about this opportunity in the market, uh, focus on letting them know that, hey, this is a good time to buy. The market is short. This is only going to go up. And, and the property valuation, I showed you all the stats and throughout the Carolinas show every one of our markets are growing. We don't have a market that is losing property valuation. It, it, it's always going to be different for the rest of the country. If, if you're looking at California and, and Washington, uh, those markets are different. Higher price point, people pay way too much for their homes, not in the South. So take advantage of this market, focus on the positives, educate your clients, and I'm really excited about this business. Again, once again, regardless of what's going to happen, the Fed is trying to create this recession. They're forcing this recession to slow down things. But once again, we are in the right business. We're in the right industry. We are going to face this when we have the, the least number of homes in the market. That's the difference between now and 2008. In 2008, we had surplus of homes, too many homes in the market, not enough equity. Nobody had equity because of the loans. Today, it's a different market. People are, are seeing great equity in their homes. Nobody's going to walk out. We are short. Any, any amount of inventory that gets into the market is going to be absorbed quickly. So once again, real estate is a great business to be in right now, given the financial situation. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.
That was great as always. And I love how you ended it with unstoppable. That's who we are and what we need to do and remember day in and day out. With that, we are going to turn it over to Anna, and she's going to share a quick update on what is going on with KV Core, some things you should get excited about, as well as some things you should be doing to prepare, because although we don't have a date yet, we are getting closer. Anna. Thank you, Tiffany. I just want to confirm that everyone can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up if you could see it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I hope everyone's doing great today. Karush, thank you for that wonderful presentation. Very informative. I'm going to speak on KV Core and a um, little agenda here so you guys can follow along. I'm going to go over some of the key features why you should use KV Core, the virtual assistant and artificial intelligence lead capture that it has. And then I'll do a little live demo for you guys because I do have access to the back end of it currently. And then I have a get prepared now. I'll give you three steps on how you can actually get ready for KV Core, and then we'll discuss training and support. So first and foremost, I wanna go over some of those key features. And what I would like to remind everyone is that we currently have Bouge. That is the CRM. That is what we have that controls our lead generation from Remax owned websites. So regardless if you have a Boomtown CRM or if you have, um, top producer, anything like that, you're still going to have to go into KV Core and forward your leads to the current CRM you use or just ultimately learn KV Core regardless. So I just want to remind everyone of that. So even if you don't plan on using KV Core, you still have to do some things in it in order to set up lead generation to wherever you want it to go. So I hope that open your ears for those that um, do use a different CRM currently. But let's go ahead and talk about some of those key features. So you guys have probably already heard um, we are getting access to KV Core, which is the CRM portion, Core Present, which is the CMA and pricing visualization, Core Listing Machine and Design Center. And then of course, it is optimized all for Teams as well, which is something we didn't have prior with Bouge. So I'm gonna scroll down here and talk about that artificial intelligence lead generation. I know that this really gets people going and excited. And this is what makes KV Core different from a lot of other CRMs out there. So once KV Core captures a lead, it will go ahead and run a lead validation, which enriches the profile, their profile with their name. They'll try to find their real name. They'll find their um, email, they'll find where they live. They'll even try to find their social profiles and then it'll give it a predictive score. That score is going to get to you and say, hey, do I want to focus my time on this lead or is this predictive score very low and probably not a warm lead that I need to focus my time on? So not only is it providing this information, it's saying, hey, you probably shouldn't focus on these ones, but you can really focus on these other leads that you have. So that is very different with a lot of other CRMs that are out there. Another thing that KV Core has is a virtual assistant. So once that lead is captured, KV Core will actually call you via your smart number. And yes, you do have your own smart number that is localized to your area um, that they will give you a call on through the system but it will give you a call and attempt to get you connected with the lead in real time. So this is where most leads tend to go dark. Um, they tend to fall in the back of your CRM and you never reach them again and they just go cold, right? So KV Core does a really good job at not only enriching that lead, but after you try to give them a call, even if you leave them a voicemail, you never hear from them again, KV Core will start to continue to nurture that lead to see if they can actually turn that lead into a prospective client and then go ahead and get them close from there. So the artificial um, intelligence and virtual assistant is something that I have seen and it is great um, with KV Core. So those are just a few things. Now I want to give you a short video on what this actually looks like. That way it'll help you kind of learn on what um, the process is for lead generation. 
So please go ahead and give me a thumbs up again if you can hear this. Let me jump in and show you a live example of how that works. Now I'm going to start out with your KV Core website. Every single agent and every single team within Remax are going to receive a beautiful branded IDX powered website. That's right. Every single agent and every single team will receive your own dedicated Remax branded website. Now these websites are going to be beautiful and work for you right out of the box but they are customizable as well. So you can inject your own personality, your own local flavor into the website. Now, these websites are gonna feature your local expertise with local area pages and listing carousels. They'll even have tools for seller lead capture. But these websites are more than just a pretty face. We know that your website's number one job is to capture more leads and help drive new business. And KV Core websites do that better than anyone. In fact, KV Core websites capture on average three times more leads, thanks in part to a beautiful portal grade consumer search experience. So as your customers get on your website and start browsing around and looking for homes, KV Core is going to be tracking everything that they do, every area page they look at, every property they look at, every photo, all that information is being tracked. And when your customers start to show some warm intent, we are going to prompt them to register. Now, you'll notice we're very strategic about this process. All we do is ask for an email address. As they start to type that in, we're going to ask for a cell phone number as their password. Pretty clever, huh? Now, as this consumer captures as a new lead, a few things are going to happen instantly. Right away, we are going to run a process called lead validation. That's going to tap into third-party data sources to enrich this customer's profile with additional information. That means we're going to go out and find their real name. That's right. No more Mickey Mouse leads. We're going to find a real name. We're going to look for their home address, for their employment information. We'll even try and connect their social media profiles. We'll do all of this to enrich their profile and then combine that information with their activity on your website. We use this to kick off a predictive score. That's going to help you prioritize your outreach and focus on your hottest opportunities so you're not wasting your time, money, or gas. Now that we've captured this lead and validated this lead, we're going to get them connected to you right away. You can choose to receive a text notification or an email notification, but we'll also pick up the phone and call you and let you know you've got a new lead and attempt to connect you to this consumer in real time. We know that speed to lead is critical in today's day and age, and so we'll try and connect you right away. Now, maybe the consumer doesn't pick up the phone right? That's where things typically start to go dark. That's where this lead might fall into your CRM. It's a bit like cold storage, let's be honest. We might never hear from this consumer again, right? That's where KV Core is fundamentally different though. That's where KV Core is going to start working like a virtual assistant and engaging and nurturing this lead on your behalf. What I mean by that is this consumer is going to receive a text message from you automatically that says, hey, Nick, thank you so much for visiting my website. I noticed you checked out 123 Main Street. Here's a couple additional properties that I think you might be interested in. And these are going to be homes that the consumer hasn't yet seen that meet their criteria, their price point, their bed and bath parameters. They're homes that are even going to look aesthetically similar because KV Core has been running image recognition on every single photo in the MLS. This is all gonna happen automatically on your behalf without you having to lift a finger. All right, so the one thing I do wanna point out with that here is that not only is it gonna nurture your lead, but it's gonna get it more connected. That way it's gonna run image recognition on all of the photos within MLS. And it's going to go ahead and show that lead, hey, here are some homes, some properties that you also might be interested in. So it's not pulling them homes that have only one bathroom when this lead specifically asked for three. It's going to really give value to that lead. So I do want to go into some details. You guys are probably all wondering, Anna, when are we going to get KV Core? Stop showing me things. I just want to know when. Um, 
We are working on our back end in order to get everything ready for you guys. We're hoping that we can go ahead and release this in May to everyone. Um, now, I want to talk about the training and support that's going to be available to you guys. And right now, I'm going to take you into KV Core so you can see how simplistic it looks like. And then we'll go ahead and talk about the support and training and how you can get started now. So you will access KV Core within Mac Center. It also has an app that you can access on your phone as well. When you first get access to KV Core, you'll receive an email from KV Core that we have sent out on their behalf that says, you have access now, welcome to KV Core, right? Everyone's gonna be waiting for that email. From there, you'll go into Mac Center, make sure you know your Mac Center login and password. And then you're gonna go ahead and find that Max Tech powered by KV Core. Keep in mind that Max Tech is gonna be that keyword that you're gonna see everywhere. It might not specifically say KV Core. You're looking for Max Tech, you can look for KV Core, it might be interchangeable names there. Once you click on this, this is what your dashboard is going to look like. Mine's a company admin account, so you can see it runs the same. I might have a little bit different information, but once you first get in here on the very bottom left, it is going to walk you through the first steps of setting up your account properly, downloading those apps, checking your smart number, looking at those smart campaigns. It's going to do it very easy and simplistic for you. You're not going to need an assistant to help you out with this process, I promise. From here, all of your tools are on the bottom left. I know CRMs can get so complicated, they just look extremely messy, but I truly believe that this one is very simplistic. So you have your smart CRM, all of your contacts, marketing opportunities, that core present with the CMA listing presentations, lead generation opportunities. I'll show you guys this, this is pretty cool. Shows you how you can also generate more leads and then your website information, marketplace where you can connect a ton of other things such as um, Google AdWorks, Facebook advertisements, all that other stuff. The main thing that we're going to probably focus on, right, is your getting your contacts in there, which brings me to my next point. When you get access to KV Core, it will also walk you through the process of importing your current database into the system. Instead of having you doing this all on your own, you can actually send it to KV Core through your dashboard and they'll actually upload all of your contacts for you and organize them. That way there's no error once you're looking into your database, which is amazing because <laughs> if you've ever uploaded an Excel sheet, you know that it can get pretty messy. So KV Core is gonna have the support team that is expertized in this and they're gonna do it for you. Last thing I wanna talk about is the support and how you guys can get started right now. So there are a ton of training opportunities that you have via webinars, but once you get access to KV Core, what you're gonna do is take the agent quick start course. The course takes about an hour to two hours. However, you're gonna take some time out of your day to actually walk through that course as it's genuinely gonna prepare you for everything you need to know about KV Core. Beyond this, KV Core also has a huge support system. They're a very large company, so they have a ton of employees on their support staff team that you can access in real time via a chat bubble or by giving them a call, and they'll be there for you as well. Okay, now let me go ahead and go up to what training will be provided. Once we launch with KV Core, Myself and my team are going to be visiting majority of our offices to go ahead and make sure that you guys are prepared, you're ready for KV Core. And from there, once you have access, like I said, you'll go through the process of the setup within the system, and then you'll take that agent quick start course. And then, of course, if you have any questions, reiterate them to KV Core or contact myself or my team at that help email address that you guys have been using. So that is it for me on KV Core. I hope you guys are excited. May is coming up sooner than you know it. So definitely get prepared.
Thank you so much, Anna. That was great and helpful information. We will continue to put out information on KV Core and all of our training classes in the real estate agent portal through your emails, through your texts. So please be on the lookout because we should have our date fairly soon. Also, again, wanted to congratulate everyone on being with the number one Remax in the Southeast. Thank you guys for all you do and for how you have really uh, made a difference in your community and for the firm. So thank you very much. And just wanted to remind you, if you wanna be a Miracle Agent this year and you don't wanna put $500 total immediately, you could do some type of plan to get started. So don't forget about Children's Miracle Network. Honor cards per house as the spring season is coming is something that we all should be considering to support this and then you can also have your pledge piece so if you have any questions or you need help with children's miracle network your admins are available to help and we really appreciate all you do and thank you for your time today hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and a great month we'll see you next month let's clap thanks. everybody thanks tiffany thanks patty thanks Krish. thank you bye-bye bye everyone